3D topology is the process of rebuilding or restructuring the geometry of a 3D object. For certain use cases like texturing, shading or rigging, good topology is not only a time saver but in some cases necessary to get a good end result. Here's a simple example. After you're done sculpting your super detailed character with dynamic topology, you want to animate it. So you build a rig or skeleton for the character and apply it to the geometry of the model. You can move the character, but you encounter a problem. When you move the bones of the rig, it's super slow and laggy, which makes it almost impossible to work with. Because of the high density of the model, Blender can't move so many vertices at the same time in real time, so it starts to lag. By retopologizing, you can keep the amount of detail your character has, and on top of that, you can not only apply the rig to your character more easily, but you can also move and animate it in real time without any hiccups. In most cases, retopology is not necessarily a vital step, but rather a technique to make the rest of the workflow way easier and faster. There are three ways that I know how to retopologize a 3D model. Manual retopology, automatic retopology, and reusing old geometry from a different model. Manual retopology means you create the retopologized model by yourself using the good old modeling tools. Automatic retopology means you let a program, plugin, or function retopologize the model for you after setting up the parameters to get the best result possible. And last but not least, you can reuse old geometry from a retopologized model and reuse it for the new model. There are certain plugins like Softwrap that allow you to do this, although it might be possible to do that without plugins as well. This video will only cover how to retopologize manually, because if you want to use the other techniques, I highly recommend doing it manually at least once to get a better understanding of the more intricate details of retopology. When you're retopologizing, you don't clean up the existing topology of your model, but you create a copy of it by placing new geometry on the surface of the old model. This way you can solely focus on the new topology structure, the shape gets copied over automatically. To start, add a new plane and enable the snap option over your 3D viewport. Open up the drop down menu and set it to face, snap with closest, enable project individual elements and tick effect, move, rotate, scale. Now when you move your new plane over the 3D model, the pivot point will snap to the surface of it. If you go into edit mode and move the individual vertices, they will stick to the surface as well. You've just created the first phase of your new retopologized model. Now just extrude out an edge, rotate and move it to the next phase and you do that until you've covered the entire model. To work twice as fast, I would recommend using the mirror modifier so you only have to work on one side. Best practice is sticking to four-sided faces, although triangles can be used in some rare occasions as well, like optimizing the poly count of the model. The process is pretty simple, so let's get into the main strategy as well as some tips and tricks to save you some time and nerves. You could start at the top and add more and more faces all the way to the bottom. A better way to do it though is to use the divide and conquer method. The goal of this technique is to first build a harness or cage of faces that not only captures the main form of the model but also splits it into multiple pieces or sections, for example for a character that could be its individual limbs. By dividing the model first, you can focus on the edge flow before you fill the gaps and cover the rest of the surface. This way you don't run into the problem of filling one part with geometry before realizing that the current topology or edge flow won't work for the rest of the model. Speaking of edge flow, you can describe it as the flow that gets created by the rows of faces that form the model. Faces that connect on the edges parallel to each other are part of the same flow. You can easily identify the edge flow by adding a loop cut to a face of the model. Every face the cut goes through is part of that edge flow. It highly contributes to the structure of a model. Thus, it is recommended for the edge flow to follow the main landmarks of the model. Looking at an example, you can see the rings of faces around the eye, the mouth and nose holes as well as the edge flow following the structure of the chest or crotch. The best way to learn good edge flow and topology is to just do it yourself with some reference at hand to check if you're on the right path. You don't need to invent a new way to create good edge flow if there's already a proven way to do it. Retopology is less about improvisation and more about applying the methods that work. Especially for animations there are specific ways to place your geometry to ensure good deformations. Speaking about it, let's quickly cover some techniques that will help you a lot when you're creating the main edge flow or you're trying to understand the topology of someone else's model. Here's the way to create a 90 degree turn. And here's a way to reduce the amount of edges that follow the main flow. Keep in mind that only triangles can end an edge flow. Four-sided faces can only redirect into different directions. After you've created the topology cage, you can fill the missing holes. Depending on how big they are, you might want to split them into even smaller pieces to avoid future trouble. Quick tip, to fill a topology hole, you can use the grid fill function. Play around with the settings and the hole will be filled with a grid of new faces. And after filling all the remaining holes, you have a copy of your original model with optimized topology. Now, to retain all the small details that you had previously, there's one more thing we need to do. 
Duplicate your retopologized model, move it next to the other one. Now apply a shrink wrap modifier to the new model that is still perfectly on top of the old model and copy the settings you see here. Afterwards, add a subdivision modifier to the same model, move it over the shrink wrap modifier and increase the subdivision level until all the details are being captured by the new model. I would recommend to stay in the range of 2 to 5 subdivision levels depending on how strong your PC is to avoid any crashes. If you see crazy stretching or small holes, moving the geometry of the modified model a bit should resolve most issues like that. After you're satisfied with the modified model, keep the level of subdivision in mind and apply both modifiers. Now go to the duplicate of your new model, apply a multi res modifier and hit the subdivide button as many times as you have subdivided the other copy. And now select the subdivided version, afterwards the multi res version with shift plus left click and hit reshape under the shape tab of the multi res modifier. And there you go. Now you have a retopologized model where you can switch between multiple levels of detail depending on how much resolution you need. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to give it a dislike and tell me in the comments why. If you want to see more of my videos, feel free to subscribe to this channel. You can also join me live on my live channel. The link for that should be in the description. If you want to get some personal feedback on your own artworks, maybe some retopologized models, then you can join our community discord. The link should also be in the description. I hope you have a great day and maybe I'll see you next time. See ya!